Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly, and Jeff, we're going to wrap up day two. We're going to wrap up theCUBE here at uh, Tableau Customer Conference 13, TCC 13. We're here at the Gaylord Hotel in Maryland, uh, in just outside of DC. It's been a great event. Uh, we've heard from customers, the passion for Tableau. We've heard about how visualization is unlocking the power of big data at organizations. A lot of data analysts, we're not talking really IT people, we're talking you know, much more the, either the liaisons between business and, and, and technology or just the, the, the liaisons to the business. And these are largely business analysts here, uh, very forthcoming about how they're using the product, very happy to, to talk in public about over the place, from small to large. We just heard from Susan Beyer, you know, single person shop, basically, you know, creating tons of value for her, for her customers, you know, all the way to much, much larger organizations, the Congressional Budget Office using Tableau, and um, just many, many examples. This is a platform that is um, omni-uses. Uh, and so, this, the other thing is, you know, Tableau, as we've talked about uh, all week, is really on two vectors. One is to really, enhance, replace, uh, you know, change the thinking around traditional BI um, and to, to radically change the way in which analysis is done. And the other is to really take Excel users and put them on steroids, really give them a platform that they can use to help visualize data, you know, much better. We've heard some great keynotes. Kristen Chabot was CEO, chairman of of Tableau, gave a, gave a fantastic talk. Walter Isaacson today, Nate Silver today. Uh, we've heard from developers, we've heard from customers. It's really been an eye-opening event, a very successful one, on top of an IPO that was, I think, you know, by all accounts, a blockbuster. There's a company with $200 million run rate in revenue, a $4 billion market cap, they got $200 million in the bank, they did a $170 million raise in their IPO. You know, a lot of momentum, a lot of wind at the back, and a lot of upside. This company only does about 20% of its sales overseas, outside of North America, so there's a lot of upside there. And generally, it, it believes, Tableau believes, and, and I think we would concur that it's underpenetrated. Most business users aren't actually using such products today. They're not without competition. This is a big market. It's, it's many billions, anywhere from 13 to 15 billion, and probably much larger if you think about the potential penetration into lines of business. So it's a large market, there is competition, and it's going to grow. It's going to come from traditional BI vendors. It's going to come from uh, more emerging vendors like like Tableau and ClickTech and others, and it's going to come from Microsoft itself, who's going to continue to enhance Excel. So, Jeff Kelly, that's my sort of diatribe on this event. What are your takeaways? Uh, so, you know, I think you know very well put. Um, they are, they being Tableau, are, are clearly uh, in a in a very good position right now. Uh, the IPO was very successful. They've got a customer base here that, I mean. The word love, we, we, throw that, we shouldn't throw that word, word around too much, but these customers love Tableau. They love the tool, they love the company, they love the culture, uh, they love each other. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, a lot of collaboration going on among uh, the, the community of Tableau users and customers. Um, so they're in very good shape. I think you know, when we talk about the big data space, you know, there's different layers to that uh, discussion. Um, you know, the Hadoop, NoSQL, uh, portion of that market gets a lot of coverage because it's uh, some really you know cutting edge technology and it's changing the, the the landscape in terms of what you're able to the amount of data and the type of data you're able to store and process now, um, and it's very competitive. But if you look up the stack up to the really the top of the stack to the data visualization world, Tableau is in a great position. They're really the uh, the leading next generation data visualization company. And from their standpoint, from Tableau's standpoint, it doesn't really matter who wins the Hadoop market, for instance. It doesn't matter who wins the NoSQL market or to what degree it eats into the relational world. Tableau wants to be there to visualize your data no matter where you get it from. So Tableau is very well uh, positioned for that. That said, there are some significant challenges they're going to face over the next uh, you know, year, five years, 10 years. Um, you know, they are trying to uh, unseat uh, traditional business intelligence uh, applications and uh, deployments, such as you know SAP Business Objects, IBM Cognos, and others. And those organizations have um, you know SAP, IBM in particular. You know they have the ear of the CEO with their customers. Uh, you know they have been there for years. Um, you know despite the frustrations end users have with them, uh, you know IT is comfortable with them, um, and so they're going to have a challenge. Uh, you know, kind of unseating those uh, traditional players. Um, you know, I think they're going at it the right way, focusing on not on IT, not on even necessarily the uh, the C level. They're focusing on their users. Um, 
They're taking a land and expand strategy going in where uh, they find, in many cases, frustrated end users who, you know, maybe they have a, a license for, uh, you know, a business object or another traditional um, enterprise business intelligence application, but they don't really use it. They're looking for new ways uh, to actually interact with their data. That's where Tableau comes in. And once they get a hold, uh, you know, in a department, for example, um, they're seeing those deployments expand. People see what they're doing with it, what their colleagues are doing with Tableau, and they, they want to know if maybe there's a way they can leverage the technology. So, you know, that's the way they're going at it, but it's still, it's going to be a challenge to, um, you know, overcome the entrenchment that the traditional business intelligence applications have, which are, you know, those, those uh, companies, those which were once independent BI companies are now part of much larger organizations like SAP and Oracle and IBM and others and Microsoft. So, um, you know, they've got significant resources to hang on to that business. So, that'll be a challenge. I think also as they grow, um, you know, there's, they're going to be under pressure now as a public company to, you know, grow revenue. And Tableau is very well known for their culture and for a real focus on the customer. Um, clearly, we saw that at this conference. Um, you know, the challenge I think will be as they expand, as they add more uh, staff and mark both, you know, from a development staff as well as marketing and sales, et cetera, to keep that internal culture and also to keep the focus on the customer and not the shareholders. Um, you know, which is inevitable. It comes with uh, the territory when you become a public company. So I think those are the two big challenges for Tableau, but there's huge opportunity. About 13,500 customers they've got now, which is just, you know, just a, just a, just a sliver of the uh, total available market. Jeff, you've been following this business for a while. You, you're, you're an analyst in this space, the big data space, you know, generally, and you've followed the, the BI space for quite some time, and you, you understand a lot of what's going on here. I want to ask you two questions, uh, two areas. One is the SaaS piece of the, mm -hmm. the story. Um, do you get it, do you buy it? That uh, it's complementary, it's going to take some time to evolve. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's, uh, in the short run, it's certainly, I think it's a good move. I think for, for Tableau, as I mentioned, their land and expand strategy uh, is really how they are, are looking to grow the business. Um, and in order to do that, it, Tableau needs to offer as many easy ways to get customers starting to use a product as possible. So, you know, they've had something called Tableau Public uh, for a while, essentially a, basically an online version of their software that was free. You could upload a limited amount of data and get, get started with that, publish it to your blog, your wiki, whatever. Whatever the case may be. Um, they've got a desktop licenses. So really trying to make it easy for end users to start using the product. I see Tableau Online, their SaaS uh, version of the uh, Tableau application is just kind of a, a, another another way that customers can start using Tableau. It just lowers the barrier uh, to use, uh, to adoption. So in the short term, I think it's a, it's a smart move. Um, long term, you know, I think you know, there, are, there is going to be the risk, certainly, that they could start to cannibalize their uh, on-premise business, but you know, we're seeing this shift uh, to the SaaS model happen across all different sectors of the software market, um, and I don't think business intelligence and visualization is going to be any different. Um, so they're going to increasingly have to put more resources, I think, into that offering um, and really make it a core part of their, not make it, it's important that they don't make it kind of a, uh, you know, the, the neglected stepchild of the, their, their uh, portfolio of, of products. Um, you know, that, it's going to take some time before I think it catches on, um, but long term, I think it's something they're going to have to put more resources into. Um, the second piece is, is mobile. We just heard uh, uh, yesterday Tableau announced the, the, the desktop version for the Mac, which is a long time in coming. I mean, a lot of the users I talked to were really looking forward to that. Um, you know, Mac's been <laughs> kicking butt, <laughs> doing very well. That's not so much concerning to me. What is, is more concerning is the mobile, the tablet. Didn't hear a lot about support for mobile and tablet. Mm -hmm. Kristen Chabot mentioned a great Tableau mobile platform, and I'm not sure, I got to dig, dig into that, I don't know if you know, but I didn't hear a lot of discussion about mobile support. You know, you go, you go to SAP Sapphire, that's all they talk about. Yeah. The app store for the enterprise, enabling mobile, so either I just don't understand it, or they didn't articulate it, or it's not there. Do you have any insight there? When I talk to Tableau customers, the mobile, I, I don't talk to, I haven't talked to a lot that have, um, that are using Tableau's mobile capabilities. That's not to say they're not there, um, but I just don't, I don't think it's a focus of most of their customers right now. That said, it's going to be critical as we move forward. It was interesting that Christian brought that up, I think in response to your question about potential blind, blind spots. Blind spots, right. So, 
you know, going back. But you're at least cognizant of it. Yes, well, so that's step one. Um, but it's definitely important. Uh, so uh, a fellow analyst of ours, Howard Dresner, does, uh, does some really great survey work um, called Wisdom of the Crowds Around Business Intelligence. Um, I've been following Howard's work for a while now, and consistently one of the top um, interests of BI users and buyers is, is the mobile uh, side of the business. So I think, again, this is an area that Tableau can't afford to ignore. Clearly when they put their resources into a product uh, such as their core visualization technology, you know, they do great things. So I think they're going to have to either one, start to build up that team of developers that are focused on the mobile experience because it's not the same, as, it's not simply shrinking visualizations to fit on a mobile screen. Uh, it's in a lot of ways a very di different discipline. So these are going to have to build internally or potentially there are a few smaller uh, you know, mobile focused business intelligence companies out there, you know, maybe acquisition targets um, they might want to think about. Uh, we'll so see. They can't just pave the cow path as Paul Gillen would say. That's, that's uh, an interesting way to put it, but yeah, I would say uh, they can't just, you know, they can't just say either one, we're just going to, we're just shrink our product down and put it on a smaller screen. Doesn't work. Uh, that's been proven, I think, in the early days of uh, BI. We saw the traditional guys try to do that, and it didn't work. Um, and they cer certainly just can't ignore it altogether. So uh, either they're going to have to build internally, focus on developing their mobile capabilities, or potentially acquisition um, some, some point down the road. All right, Jeff, well listen, thank you very much for the last two days you know, hanging with me, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, uh, with all of our guests. It was a very good conference, enlightening. The Cube, we'd love to come to events like this where uh, it's relatively new to our audience, even though we've been following Tableau. We've had a number of Tableau executives on the Cube in the past, but not really a ton of their customers. Although, Abi Mehta, one of the early customers years ago. Uh, Mark Hopkins, Mick, Matt, thank you guys very much. Kenny for, for flying out in the pinch. Uh, Bert Lattimore's here roaming the, the event, capturing uh, knowledge, and, and he's going to be sharing that. John Furrier, who couldn't be here, uh, the normal you know, uh, lead anchor of the, the Cube, had a commitment in Palo Alto, so thank you, John, for you know, the support. Jeff Frick, all the tweets. Uh, Kristen Nicole, Art Lindsay, you guys are amazing. Really appreciate uh, all the great support. Go to siliconangle.com, you'll see all the blogs from this event, all the other news. Uh, we write up every single interview that we do, so if you missed the coverage, you can go back, you can, you can get the further analysis. If you don't have time to watch the video, you can, you can, you can scan the blog. Go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. That's where you'll find the playlist of the uh, Tableau Customer Conference TCC 13, so check that out. Go to wikibon.org, check out all the research. It's free research, no paywall, it's all open source. We don't charge for any of the research. Go to wikibon.org slash big data and you'll see a lot of the work that we've done around big data. Um, sign up, hit edit, you know, hit you know, the, the post uh, uh, button and put up a, a piece. We'd love to hear from you and uh, thanks for all your participation. Appreciate all the tweets. That's it for now, everybody. We will be at Oracle Open World. Um, right. Oracle Open World is this month. and A couple we'll weeks. A couple, two weeks, yeah. And then we'll be at dot .conf in Las Vegas, Oracle Open World's at the Moscone Center. So we will be there inside the QLogic booth. Don't tell Oracle, we're going to gorilla in. We'll be inside the <laughs> QLogic booth. Q I think you just told them. <laughs> great, uh, great sponsor of ours. Essentially gives us a large portion of its booth at Oracle Open World. So, so we have our guests in there. They're, they're pretty much, uh, you know, everybody likes QLogic except Emulex. So they're, they're <laughs> that's, <laughs> otherwise, so <laughs> everybody else will come into their booth. Uh, Amy Lex won't, but that's so be it. But so, th so thanks to, for Q Logic for always making that happen. It's a, it's a great event, uh, even though we're stuffed into a small space, we make it work. And then the Splunk.conf conference uh, in Vegas, uh, I think it's at the Aria this year. Uh, and the Cosmopolitan. The Cosmo, right, uh, one of the two, right. So it's at the Cosmopolitan. Another situation where the customers are very passionate. So we'll have the Cube out there, looking forward to that. So we'll see you then. Uh, we're out for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly for theCUBE. See you next time.